So, so far we've talked about what intervals look like on the staff, how to identify them, how to build them, but let's connect them now to what they sound like. And some of you have done a little bit of this before with me in class, some of you haven't. Uh, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna grab a piece of paper and you're gonna copy what I got here. I didn't have time, I'm so sorry, to make a worksheet out of it for you this week. We just ran into some technical problems, which is why this video is late, but I think we got it worked it out and worked out now. So uh, what you're gonna want is three columns, one with the interval, uh, starting from the smallest and going to the largest. Then I wrote in the solfege next to that, uh, starting on do, on the low do, and going up. And you'll notice that the enharmonics are both written in. So do to D or do to ra, either way. Technically, the first one is correct if you're ascending from do, but it's the same note as that one, so I wrote it in anyway. So, uh, so let's go through here and copy these, and then we will go through some examples of what they sound like in songs together. So pause here. Okay, so for your uh, for each of these intervals, essentially what you're doing, you actually already know all of these intervals in one way or another. You know what they sound like. It's a matter of putting a label on it and going, oh, that's what that is. Okay, so we're just gonna connect it to known stuff. For example, this very first one, your half step, I'm gonna put one example on here, but I'm gonna mention a lot more. So write down the ones that work for you. If you don't know the song, um, that's clearly not gonna be of help to you. So, uh, so find something that works for you. Okay, so minor second, Sounds like do, D. Okay, so half step apart, and a lot of people recognize it as Jaws, the Jaws theme. Da 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 Right. Um, the other uh, option that you have is, uh, well, there's lots of options if you want to Google it. Uh, Fear Lease at the beginning. Da 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 da. Right? Um, or Pink Panther. Da 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 da. Most of those first few notes are, are all half steps. Okay, so uh, any, any one of those that works for you. Major second, do, re. Uh, the one that I tend to hear is very simply put, happy birthday, happy birthday. Okay, but there are tons of other options, things like uh, Silent Night, the first th two notes, Silent, or Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer, all oh, the Christmas songs, or uh, or Beatles fans, you have the like, first two notes of like yesterday, yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. So then we go on to minor third. The one that I tend to hear is Green Sleeves or What Child Is This? What child is this who lay to rest? All right, but I'm finding that more and more fewer people are familiar with that one. Um, the other option that I have down that's pretty common is uh, the first two notes of Frosty, descending. Frosty, the snowman. Okay, so on to major third. So a lot of you will probably recognize this by just our do me exercises every day. Do me. It's one of the reasons why we do it because it's an important interval to know off the top of your head. So that little exercise works. Um, another one is Beethoven's fifth. I hear this one all the time, but it's descending. Da 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 da. Beethoven's Fifth Symphony there. Okay, and there are others. I mean, seriously, Google them. If neither of these works for you, you can find a bunch of them. There are lots of options like, oh, when the saints, oh, when the saints go marching in, first two notes of that one. I mean, uh, swing low, sweet chariot, first two notes of swing low. Uh, lots of folk songs use it, or Beatles again, can't buy me love, can't buy, it's a major third. All right, so lots of options there. Find one that works for you. Perfect fourth is almost always referred to as Here Comes the Bride. Because it's just ubiquitous, everybody knows it. Here comes the bride, perfect fourth, do fa. Tritone, you have a couple of options if you're familiar with West Side Story. Um, if you're not, I highly recommend listening to the soundtrack. It's not my favorite stage music musical ever, but it is one of my favorite musical scores. Um, just so complex. Leonard Bernstein's awesome. Um, and one of the reasons why is because he wrote things like tritones and melodies. Maria, I just met a girl named Maria. Highly recommend. Go listen to it. Um, the other one, if you're, you know, equally cultured in watching The Simpsons, The Simpsons, also the same, uh, the same interval starting out. You can probably find others, but those are the most common. Perfect fifth is almost always labeled as twinkle twinkle, again, because everybody knows it. Twinkle twinkle little star, twinkle twinkle. Um, but it can also be um, the interval in Star Wars, right? Da 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 da
Okay. Um, there's tons of others. Again, Google it. I know I keep saying that, but that's totally true. Find one that works for you. Minor six. So sixes and sevenths are a little harder to find in melodies, and you can probably understand why. They're just farther apart, so they're less common um, in, in your typical folk songs and melodies that are recognizable to people, but they do exist. For minor sixth, um, I tend to uh, I tend to do when Israel was in Egypt land. I don't know if you know that one, um, but it's a common uh, spiritual in the choir world, when Israel was in Egypt land, let my people go. Okay, and I know that's a little less common, so if that one doesn't work for you, there are other options as well. Um, perhaps you know the entertainer on the piano. Whoa, entertainer, apparently. Ha! Entertainer. <laughs> there we go. Um, so if you don't know it, the da 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 the little jumping back and forth, bum 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 bum, are minor sixths. Um, the other ones, uh, I, I don't know what's cool anymore, what's popular, but um, the word fire and we are young, like tonight we are young, so I set the world on fire, minor six. On to major sixth, uh, most common one, folk song, my body lies over the ocean really common one. The other ones, uh, let's see other options. Um, Jingle Bells, uh, the verse, dashing through the snow, or the little chimes on NBC, dum dum dum, first two notes are major six. Um, let's see, descending major six could be man in the mirror. Um, I'm talking about the man in the mirror. Okay, so lots of options there. Minor seventh, um, also again, uh, West Side Story, man, uh, somewhere from West Side Story, so good. Um, there's a place for us. Okay, so if you don't know that one though, um, let's see what else. Uh, how about Winner Takes It All, ABBA, Mamma Mia, anyone? The winner takes it all. If you happen to find a really good one that you think lots of people will recognize, please do send it to me because I'm always looking for good ones, especially in this realm right here. Okay, um, on to major seventh. We have a few options. Again, this one works for me. I don't know if it will for you, but don't know why. It's Nora Jones. <laughs> um, I waited till I saw the signs. Don't know why you didn't come. That one. Um, so if you don't know that one, uh, a lot of people know Pure Imagination from Willy Wonka. In a world of pure imagination, a world is a major seventh. Some people also just find Do T. Um, works for them if they're familiar enough with their solfege because it's so close to just an octave and they can hear when it's just a half step off or an octave. So whatever works for you. Last one, um, Singing in the Rain works. I hear that one a lot. I'm singing in the rain or somewhere over the rainbow. There's lots of octave ones. Um, Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Find one that works for you, one that you can recognize easily. So now let's move on to uh, sort of a trick um, when you're listening to an interval and trying to identify it, which is of course the goal and what will work in your um, in your musictheory.net exercises. They're gonna be playing an interval for you, ascending or descending, and then you go, I know what that is, and you label it by its name. Um, so one way that you can kind of narrow it down, because some of them can be easily confused with each other by ear, one way you can narrow it down is by class. And this this actually isn't something you probably would learn in like a college music theory class. This is something my old high school music theory teacher taught me, and it worked well for me, especially starting out at the beginning. So by class, I don't mean anything official. I mean just by the way it sounds. So the first kind of interval is the harmony interval. Okay, these are the intervals that sound pretty together, um, that, that in our minds would sound like classic harmony. And what you're going to hear in those, you're going to hear thirds and sixths. Those are your harmony intervals. Try playing them on the piano. You'll hear what I'm talking about. Try playing the two notes together. Um, and, the, and those always sound like, uh, like traditional harmony. The second kind are the dissonant intervals. Okay, and those are gonna be your seconds, your sevenths, and your tritone. Those sound clashy, they bite. When you play them together, they clash. And then you have the ones that are in between. I like to call them open intervals. They don't really sound like pretty harmonies, but they're not dissonant either. They're kind of like the shell of a chord, like you want it to be harmony and it's not. Um, and those are your fourths, your fifths, 
and your octaves. Okay, so here's what you do when you're listening to um, an interval, and uh, let's just do one, I'll sing one for you. When you're listening to da da, what is that? Does that sound like a harmony? Does it sound like super clashy or dissonant or open? It kind of sounds like a harmony to me. So it must be a third or a sixth, and I'm gonna sing it again. La da. Okay, does that feel close together or farther apart? It feels a little close together, so it must be some kind of third. So right then, you've narrowed it down from 12 options to two. You might still have to figure out if it's a minor third or a major third, but you've narrowed down all your options. You can do that also with your dissonant ones. If it sounds clashy on the computer when it's playing for you, it's either a second, a seventh, or a tritone. And if it's super close together, you know it's a second of some kind. If it's super far apart, it's a seventh of some kind. Actually sing it and feel it in your muscles. And then if it's some in between the only one that feels like it's in the middle it's your tritone okay so hopefully that's help, a helpful process if you're really having trouble with your accuracy um, on musictheory.net just listening to an interval singing it back and then figuring out what it is by ear um, use this as a way to narrow it down narrow it down by classification by what it sounds like and then from there kind of by distance um, and then go back to your songs over here and see if you can narrow it down even further don't forget that on the computer you can actually play it over and over and over again and until you, uh, until you feel you've gotten it right. You don't have to just listen to it once and give an answer. Now, this is also why you shouldn't be hard on yourself if you think something was a sixth and it was actually a third and you're thinking to yourself, oh no, I'm so far off, I'm not good at this at all. No, actually, these are really easy to confuse uh, because this one might be do to me, this one's me to do. Okay, so you can see why they're actually related. Um, same thing with these, and same thing with these. Fourths and fifths, super easy to get confused. Eighths are a little easier, octaves are a little easier to, pull, uh, to, to separate out for obvious reasons, but fourths and fifths are easy to confuse. Um, and I've even had some people confuse seconds and tritones, because uh, they do have a sort of um, uh, quality to them that are very similar. So um, anyway, hopefully this is helpful to you. If you find um, any really great songs that we didn't mention over here that you think a lot of people would recognize, please do email them to me. I want to put together a nice poster of ways to inter uh, recognize intervals in our classroom. So anyway, good luck and email me with any questions, concerns, or feedback you got.